this is the past, this is the beginning, this is the story itself. It lays out the basic conflict that becomes the underpinning of all the future underworld stories, the blood feud between the Lycan clan, the vampire clan. It's a bit more brutal, it's a different time. So again, you could use those characters you've known and basically have a chance to kind of reinvent them for the early part of their life. The biggest challenge of making the film was getting the script right. We needed to do some rewrites and there was an impending Writers Guild strike and we had uh, Dirk Blackman and Howard McCain working with us with Len Weissman. We turned the script around in, in three or four weeks right before the strike. We had actor availability windows which meant that we had to shoot the film during a specific period of time. We had to rush into production. I was lucky to have a script which is a very good script in the first place. I like the script a lot because they were, if not new characters, characters we didn't know much about on the first movie or on the second one. We all understood when Len decided that he really didn't want to direct this one. He had just done Die Hard 4, he was exhausted, and his career had sort of led him elsewhere. We, uh, we asked him to join us as producers in Underworld 3, and that turned out great. There's other things I've been wanting to do and developing, and uh, Patrick was such a, a huge part of creating what the world became, and so it was a, an, an obvious choice. Patrick Totopoulos was the perfect director for Underworld 3 because we had actually worked with him over the years. He designed the creatures for Underworld 1, and then he was the production designer and creature designer for Underworld 2. They came to me and said, hey, what about Underworld 3? I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell you the truth, actually, the first thing they told me this, I was a little worried. I was saying, you know, one's great, two's great. Do I want to be doing the third one? And I was a little concerned because it's been done so well by Len. I thought, is that the right thing? At the same time, I thought, this is an amazing opportunity. It's a franchise. There's an audience out there waiting for it. It's the directing job role on the platter for me. And reading the script, I realized, okay, maybe I can have a slightly different take on this. It is underworld. People need to recognize they're in the underworld world. But I had a chance to do something a little different because you wouldn't see the world through the eyes of the vampires, but you'd see it through the eyes of the werewolf. And that got me very excited. For these types of movies, movies, somebody really has to feel it and get it. He's mature, he's smart. We knew him, he knew us. He had Len's confidence. So that wasn't a, a leap, really. No, that was an easy choice. He was the perfect person to, to direct the more werewolf-oriented film. The big revelation for me is uh, how intense a job it is. I just didn't realize that, you know. You, it never stops. So we're gonna stop this whole thing with Brian as he's doing this on you. Yes. So then yeah. we, then you don't, you don't knock him back. None of us had been to New Zealand, but all of us were like itching to go. So I had said to Richard Wright, who runs physical production, what about New Zealand? It's summer in New Zealand in January. And uh, not only that, but New Zealand was filled with great artisans. We thought at the time we would have to shoot enormous amounts of the film outdoors at night and we didn't want to be doing that in Eastern Europe. And there's incredible amount of people there that just have the expertise and can be your leads, and that was great. So my first reaction actually was, I would say negative, but I was like, wow, but New Zealand is too beautiful. It's incredibly gorgeous, green and thing. We're never going to be able to do anything evil there. And I started to visit the place and I discovered that no, no, not everything is pretty like a golf course. That's not true. And I found some amazing location and I fell in love right away. New Zealand started looking better and better. And look, the truth is everybody wanted to go there. The scenery is spectacular. The costs were right. We were able to shoot in their summer. It just really worked. We will return there. Generally what Hollywood does on uh, sequels is they become bigger and bigger in terms of the costs and less likely to do well then because of that. So we, we didn't want to do that with this one. We wanted to be restrained in terms of uh, the investment and still give the audience a terrific film and one that delivered you know, the size that you sort of have to do in, the, in, in this film. And uh, we managed to pull that off. Necessity is the mother of invention. Sometimes when you don't have the resources of time and money, You're, you have to tap different parts of your brain and, and you know, darned if you can't sometimes pull off miracles. I wanted to make sure that it had enough of a comic book, otherworldly feel to just be able to occupy those kinds of characters. Because right out of the gate, I think it's, it's really difficult to, uh, to, to, to present 
creatures like that that are living amongst us and, and, and all that, that that's, that's hard to sell as it is. And so if you make it a world that is unlike ours, I think that it's, it's just, it's, a, it's an easier thing to, to pull off. No matter how much money you have, you always need more because the expectations curve. Clint Culpepper and Screen Gems really supported us because at a certain point, you know, you always have a visual effects budget with your werewolves. And uh, our sets and our landscapes were so big that we needed more werewolves. But Clint has always been a believer in the Underworld franchise. He was extraordinarily supportive about making a movie that had more of a werewolf flavor than the original Underworlds. And uh, so when we ran out of money, he was, he was there. <laughs> Because this is the war, there's a lot more involved in visual effects in terms of the scale of the battles. I, I did Underworld 1 with two werewolf suits. Underworld 2, we introduced William and the first generation werewolves, but still, grand total, we're, we're talking probably four suits and just manipulated things and did different shots to make it look like more. And this film, I, I believe Patrick and his team have built like 14, so it's battles that that, that were in the, in the hundreds. We don't have like $200 million to make this movie. So you have to make very strong decision, very strong choice to get the quality on screen and still not, not lose every one of the effect because people are going to want to see that. Ultimately, there is the right balance because I had to make decision on where, how much you'd see the practical, how much you'd see the, the CGI. I probably went heavier CGI on this one than I did on the other one. And trust me, that was not a personal choice because I've built practical creatures all my life. If you look at the past and the world, one and two, the werewolf appear out of the dark and you see them for a moment grabbing and things. You don't see 500 of them running toward the castle. You can't do that with people in suit, there's no way. When you do one of these films, they're so all-consuming. We make every stitch of wardrobe, every prop, every sword, every everything has to be created. Creating this kind of a world is a very all-consuming process. It feels like a brand new story in a sense because the werewolves have always been in the background and now we get to see their side of it and it feels like a new adventure and a new movie and it's, it's big. And this is like an incredible experience. You have a vision and people are here to help you make your vision happen. This is not my story but it is something that was given to me to bring my, my texture and my style to. And I walked on set and people said, hey Patrick, hi, what's up? I felt, God, look at this. Isn't that an incredibly fabulous job to be able to come in a place like this and have people all trying to do the best they can for you? I can't imagine us not wanting to do it again. It's not every day that you get to create a whole new world out of, out of your own imagination. The movie happens during the shoot. It's like getting tons of little things and making it happen. And then the post is when you make another movie. You make your movie. Yeah! Cross my fingers and say, hey, hopefully it came out as cool as it could be. It's so out of character for me. I've enjoyed it so much. It's a really good film. I think it keeps it alive and strong. And the most enjoyable part is knowing that you were at the inception of a franchise and actually seeing that wish, that dream, that bet come true. That's probably, for me, the most uh, satisfying aspect of, of Underworld. Underworld 3 does close a trilogy. We really do have three movies that, that fit very well together. We could spin this out. There are a few hundred years of of stories left to tell. Ooh.